Great. Welcome everybody to the September um, SSI Fellows Community Call. It's great to see you um, after a little bit of a summer break. I hope you all have had time um, to yourselves, maybe taken some days off, um, maybe gone somewhere, but maybe not. Um, so I hope you're all uh, ready and gearing up for, for the next term or semester or, or whatever you have going on um, this autumn. Uh, so welcome to the call. Um, as usual, just some general guidance for today. Um, please remember to be kind both to yourself and, under, and others, be understanding and be flexible. We're now six or seven months in, into this new COVID lifestyle. So um, we're just gonna take it easy and, and be kind to each other and, and be understanding. Um, and following from that, we do have a code of conduct that you need to abide by. And if you have any issues that you would like to report, you can do so to myself or Schwabe. This call is being recorded and the videos uh, will be made available on the SSI YouTube channel after the call, um, except for the breakout room discussions, those won't be recorded. Um, but do uh, turn on your video if you don't mind sharing your face or off if you do, and please keep yourself muted when not speaking in order to minimize background noise. Um, the collaborative notes document that I shared in the chat um, is for SSI fellows only um, in case you know we share things that we don't want made uh, publicly known. Um, so please don't share the link publicly, um, but feel free to take any notes, ask any questions, add friendly comments, plus one, etc. Um, depending on what we talk about during the call, we might produce outputs such as blog posts or guides. Um, so if you do want to be involved in any kind of follow-up communications with regards to that, um, just attribute your name to, to anything that you share and we'll get back in touch with you before like sharing a blog post or anything. Um, and as this is, I think, only the third SSI Fellows community call, we are still sort of trialing and error um, these calls um, in order to find a format that suits you best. So I did tailor the format of this call a bit, um, but then we've had to rearrange um, at the last minute as one of our speakers um, had another meeting pop up that they had to attend. Um, so we'll hear from them next month. So we're going to be a little bit uh, more flexible with time today. Um, but overall, the goals of these calls are to facilitate community building and encourage collaboration within the SSI Fellows community. We want to check in with you um, and see what you're up to and how we can support you during this time and provide a welcoming and inclusive space for you to share and explore topics of interest and network with others. So uh, the agenda today, um, once I finish the welcome um, and introduction section, we'll hear from uh, Sorrel, uh, who will give her Fellows update. And then we'll uh, jump into some breakout room discussions and hear um, and do, do a share out afterwards to hear what, what we uh, talked about. And then we'll wrap up. Um, so we have one topic so far that's been proposed as a discussion topic for the breakout rooms. Um, so if you have come today with an idea or something that you want to discuss with others, feel free to add it um, in the notes. Um, and then we can break out into rooms based on what you want to talk about. I'm almost minded to just add um, a social chat room in case people just want to catch up with each other. But um, if you have if you have any specific topics that you want to discuss, uh, do feel free to to add that to the notes. Um, and then the way we'll put you into rooms is normally I would ask you to change your Zoom display name um, to indicate the number of the breakout room uh, topic that you want to join, but the Zoom update says that you can now choose your own room, so we might trial that and see if it works. Um, but quickly before we move on uh, to our fellows updates, um, we have a few actions for you if you have time. Um, and I've linked all of this in, in the notes. Um, so if you could check your profiles on the SSI website and make sure that they're up to date, that would be really great, especially if you are pre-2018 fellows, we have some updated information. Um, so we've provided a link to a Google form to make it easy for you to update that information. Um, but if you're, if you're a 2019 or 2020 fellow, um, then you should follow the usual route of updating your information in low fat, um, and then we can change it on the website. Uh, you can now connect with the Institute on LinkedIn by adding your fellowship to your own profile. And we've got some instructions in the notes on how to do that. And then you can also submit your activities, any upcoming events or calls for collaborations to be included in our SSI Fellows newsletter, which will debut this week. Um, and there's a form to submit that in uh, the notes as well. So does anybody have any questions before we move on? Want to say anything? share out anything? No, okay, so we'll move on to our fellows update. So this is an opportunity for fellows to share or show and tell during our community calls. 
Um, going forward, we will be accommodating uh, two fellows to speak instead of uh, three, as we've done previously, um, to introduce, them introduce themselves and share any updates to the network, such as their plans, demos of projects, upcoming events or other activities, projects for which they are speaking support or collaboration. Or if, you're, um, if you've been a fellow uh, for a while, we'd love to hear about your life after the fellowship and how the fellowship impacted your career. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and uh, let Sorrel give her update. Thanks, Rachel. I feel like there's quite a lot of pressure now because I'm the only one giving an update. No pressure at all. <laughs> um, I'm going to share my screen then. Um, so I'm just going to share my desktop. Bear with me a second. Um, okay, are you seeing my screen now, people? Great. Okay. Um, I did put a link to the slides in the um, card document um, in case um, anything goes wrong here. Um, so let's go. Okie doke. Okay. So um, I wanted to give an update on, oopsie, an update on on the project I've been working on in between other bits and pieces going on in my life. Um, I've been exploring the impact of management and process on academic research software. Um, so this is a project that I kind of nicknamed IMPARS um, and you can read a bit more about it through the GitHub link if you're interested. Um, in case you've never met me before, I just thought I'd better introduce myself. So I'm a lecturer at Leeds Trinity University um, do a little bit of development um, and also an SSI fellow. Um, I'm also coming out of the closet. Um, I, I am very interested in agile methodologies. Um, I've, I feel a bit sort of self-conscious to say that in front of lots of academics, but, um, but yeah, I, 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 I am interested in that and that's influenced my work in the project I've been working on. Um, and I'm also quite interested in, in coaching as well. So I'm part of an agile coaching group and I'm very happy to talk to anyone who's interested in that uh, um, uh, outside of this um, forum, if, if they would like to. Um, so just in case you haven't heard of IMPAS, I wanted to just recap what the aims of the project were. Um, so what I was interested in doing was mapping the organisational structures and management styles in research software projects. Um, and I wanted to do that to get a, a, a deeper understanding of common problems that are linked to process. And then I thought if, if, it, if I managed to get any useful data, then I might go as far as to develop some recommendations that are kind of sensitive to the different contexts in which we develop software. Um, initially I'd put down a fourth aim which was kind of a bit nebulous. Um, the first three I think I'm kind of, I've kind of achieved those aims um, and the fourth I wanted to kind of adapt um, and so what I'm really here, what, one of the things I'd like to get out of today um, is to actually facilitate this breakout discussion in a little bit um, uh, where I'd like to talk about how we as a community can actually foster this a culture that can support the kind of recommendations that have come out of the impasse project um, and i'm going to i'm going to suggest that we focus on a couple of these today because there were there were quite a few but we'll focus on a couple um, what was actually involved in the impasse project though um, i did a, a kind of series of case study interviews um, so I, I did that with 14 participants. We had in-depth interviews um, and then I did a thematic analysis following that. Um, and the people I talked to um, came from 12 different projects, um, six of which were EU funded and six of which were UKRI funded. So that also that kind of nice balance um, there gave me a bit of an insight into the differences between these two kind of funding routes. Um, and I'm sure that if you've worked on lots of these projects before, you probably already have an idea. But for me, it was quite interesting because I've, I've not had that much experience on these, on these projects. Um, 
that so that was kind of meant that was the first phase in the project and then the idea was that I'd then go on and, and facilitate a workshop to kind of enrich that data and explore the dominant themes um, but COVID kind of just screwed everything up and I just didn't feel that I could continue with that plan and um, so my aim next is just to publish the results of the study um, and Derek um, Groen and Steve Crouch have been really helpful trying to give me a bit of help with the editing there so I'm hoping that somebody will please accept that <laughs> um, and, uh, and then I'll be able to share that with you. Um, so the themes that emerged from the study I've kind of summarised here um, so basically I was just going going through the data and pulling out kind of key key um, key insights which I kind of then categorized into different themes um, and then I used that to kind of base my recommendations on um, and from the recommendations sorry <laughs> I've gone a step too far, okay. So I used the themes to kind of form kind of problem statements. Um, so what I wanted to do was kind of identify problems um, based on the qualitative data. And there are a few of those that I've selected to talk about today um, as the basis of the breakout discussion. Um, it, there was too much to pack in. I couldn't put pack everything into one breakout session, so I've just selected a few. And then I've used the problems to base the recommendations on. So the two recommendations that I wanted to um, talk about today are, the, are these two. Um, so opportunities for team members at all levels of seniority to learn more about agile development practices and software process tailoring. Um, so software process tailoring, I'm basically talking there about the need for everyone at, in all different, not just the developers, but everyone involved in a project to have the opportunity to learn um, about a wide, a broad range of different processes and techniques and to gain a bit of a broad understanding of project management practices in order to be able to pick out the ones that are going to work best for them and to be a bit more discerning about how, how we do that because what I was tending to find was that people either lacked experience or, or, they, um, or they maybe were following quite, quite a sort of traditional project management approach which maybe is quite limiting, self-limiting in a way because every project is different and, and, and by being flexible um, it, it can that can bring about its own advantages um, so and then the second one was to encourage a culture of introspection and retrospection and ensure that the, there's adequate time and resources allocated for this so there I'm talking about just trying to encourage people to actually go to the to the lengths to pick apart their project processes to actually um, question you know could this have been done another way? Is this, is this the best way to do this? And, and I, again, I didn't really get the sense that a lot of this was happening in, in the academic research context. Um, maybe possibly because people just don't have the time or they just don't have the experience. I don't, I'm not entirely sure about the reasons for that, but I, I felt that it was something that we could maybe work on um, together as a community. So that's so. I'd like to invite people to consider these these uh, how might we's together. Um, how might we support each other to implement these recommendations in practice? So it's all very well having these ideas about how we might do things better, but how can we actually how do we actually do it in practice? Um, so I wondered whether there might be any appetite within the community for perhaps some some new initiatives, maybe some. Um, new training opportunities or peer-to-peer uh, -peer mentoring. I, I don't want to put ideas into people's heads. I want the ideas to come from the community. So if you if you're interested or you might have any thoughts around this, then please, um, I'd love to hear from you in the group discussion. Um, so there's a that Bitly link there is a link to um, a Miro board, which I'll be using in the breakout room today. Um, and it's also in the shared document that Rachel's shared with everybody. 
Um, so anyway, that's that's all from me. Um, any questions? Thank you, Sora. Virtual round of applause. Uh, yeah, does anybody have any questions? Saving them for the group discussion. Oh no, that's not good. Wall of silence. That's what I get from my students every day. I'll unmute, Sarah. <laughs> um, so I think this is really, uh, it's really interesting. Um, like personally, I've had the burned experiences with Agile where it's been so rigid that it's exactly unagile and doesn't really follow the Agile manifesto. But I think that when it's well, well run, it is really useful and meaningful. Uh, like actually embracing some of the genuinely Agile processes rather than just the, the um, ceremonies i suppose um and i was wondering um do you whether so we have some built into the open life science program which is an open science uh training program that we have uh do you think that, that there would be scope for uh spending like more than like at the moment we have like, i think a 10 minute talk about open um about agile and iterative project management uh, but I'm wondering if you could see scope for like a half hour or hour workshop potentially in the future, just to, for open science enthusiasts. Um, yeah, I do. And I think that the main, what I, what I think would be a good thing to aim for from something like that is to actually get people curious and interested in finding out for themselves rather than say, oh, here's a bunch of processes. This is how you do it because that's not the idea. Um, it, it, it's about kind of, I think, first and foremost, in instilling the kind of principles and the getting people sort of enthusiastic about the idea that you can actually, that there is flexibility and, 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 and you, you have agency in this. It's, it, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to, to, to prescribe how people should go about um, applying these techniques at all and um, so yeah but I think that would be a really good thing to do yeah let's chat after this and see what we can do awesome thanks so much um, so with that I think we'll go ahead and move to the breakout room discussions because um, based on some of the feedback we've received from previous calls, um, fellows wanted more time in the breakout room discussion. So we've um, devoted a bit more than, than half the call to that. So um, the, two, the two discussion topics that have been proposed are um, the one that uh, Sorrel talked about. So um, going to that mirror board and, and discussing, discussing how the SSI uh, can support research software project management. And then Yo has proposed one, what can funders do to make RSCs accepted parts of research culture? Are you still happy to lead that, Yo? Are there any last minute breakout room topics anybody would like to propose? I'm going to create three breakout rooms just in case people just want to go off into one that isn't super structured. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to create the breakout rooms with the option to let participants choose rooms and see if that works. I don't know if everybody has to have the update or not, but I'm dying to find out if this works. So I've created breakout rooms. Has something popped up for you? Can you see breakout rooms to join? No, nothing. I, oh, that's because I have to hit open all rooms. There we go. <laughs> So hopefully you see an option to join either room one, room two, room three. Room one will be with Sorrel um, discussing Imparis. Room two will be with Yo discussing RSEs. And room three does not have a topic at all. Um, where are these rooms? I can't see them. Has it not popped up? Same here. Okay. In that case, if it has not popped up for you, we'll fall back to the other method of if you add the number associated with the topic that you want to discuss to your Zoom display name, I can manually push you into that room. So does anybody have any questions? Is that super confusing for everybody? Can you remind us what the numbers? Yeah. So I will 
Yep, so number one uh, is Sorrel's room, next steps for IMPARS, how can the SSI support research software project management? Uh, room number two is what can funders do to make RSCs accepted parts of research culture led by Yo? And room three does not have a topic if you just want to go and chat with any fellow fellows, or I guess you could just stay in here if you, if you really want to. Um, you are welcome. If, Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say you're welcome to look at the Miro board and then make your decision after looking at it if you want to. Yeah, we have a bit of time. I've blocked out some time for buffer. All right, and I've seen people add numbers. So I will go ahead and start pushing people into rooms. So, three, two, two, one, two. All right. Oh, sorry, I guess I should put you into your room. <laughs> Right, I hope everybody found that useful and enjoyable. Um, I would like to dedicate some time to just hearing about what the different rooms talked about. So if breakout room one, I don't know if Sorrel, you would like to quickly summarize what you talked about? Anything you wanna sum up? Oh gosh, I should have nominated someone else to do this. Um, yeah, we, we, we had, some interesting chat. I felt people people were forthcoming with their experiences and their questions. And we, I asked them for suggestions about how we might um, kind of try to um, implement some of these, um, some of the recommendations that I came up with in practice. Um, they're quite sort of high level. Um, how might we um, kind of, and so there's quite a few suggestions that have come about and I'd like to explore those, you know, have time to actually look through those properly and, and maybe um, come back to the community at some point with, with some of the ideas that I think might be worth taking further and maybe people could, you know, decide, we could decide between us which of the ones we want to actually, yeah, explore a bit further. So thank you everybody for your contributions. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Yo, would you like to share, would anybody from your group like to share um, a few minutes of what you talked about? I'd be very happy to share. Uh, so I posed the question, uh, what can funders do to help uh, make RSC careers uh, more, more worthwhile and more recognised within research? Um, coming from the perspective of having started working for a funder and wanting to do exactly that. <laughs> uh, so I had some nice discussions in the group. And uh, I think the single biggest thing that pretty much everyone in the team, um, in the breakout group actually agreed on was that maintenance is a hugely hugely important part uh, of making an RSC career and RSC inputs viable uh, so that we're not constantly just reinventing stuff or hiding our maintenance in a grant in order to continue doing what we want to be doing um, so that's something that I'm totally keen on championing from my side and I'm not 100% convinced I'm gonna win this so if anyone had any really great arguments about why software maintenance is important, please let's stick half an hour in chat or drop me an email um, because I, I think that this is a massive and important case that we need to make. Uh, we also, uh, sorry my chat has moved. <laughs> okay, yeah, we talked about a little bit about secret coders, um, people who don't realize that sometimes they might be writing software uh, because they, you know, they write a bit of R or something and that's not anything like they might see in a Word document or Zoom, which is what they think of software being. And ways to sort of capture that and rephrase language to make sure that people uh, who are sort of in the place where they can really easily be helped and be shown the best practices and perhaps be rewarded for the RSC work they're doing. 
uh, with some nice suggestions like uh, phrasing it more clearly, what, what code and software contributions are, and even providing buddy ROCs to write those proposals or to give them some best practice uh, knowledge as well. Anything I missed there, breakout room two? Awesome, thanks so much. Um, anybody from breakout room three wanna? <laughs> Sure. So, so, so let, let me start, the others can join in, but, but we went in for, to a lucky dip room to see what was up and we started talking about COVID and, and the different um, solutions and things that were being done at the different institutions there, predominantly started with York and Edinburgh and then Alice who's currently in the uh, uh, east coast of the US I think, um, and so we talked about a little bit about Trump and then we got a little bit depressed and then we moved on to the progression of women in difficult fields, which are male dominated, in this case, astrophysics, uh, a particular computational astrophysics, and how difficult it was to progress and whether you become a sacrificial lamb in order to pave the way for others to come after you or, um, or you move on to other uh, fields. So I don't know, if I, that, that was my take on, on the room. So we all became a little bit even more depressed after that. And then we, we, we kind of ended the, the conversation. I don't know if anybody else in room three wants to add a, a pitch on it. That's kind of... That's a good summary, Mario. Yeah, um, yeah, progression of women in STEM is, is uh, is an, a, a major issue and um, especially during, in light of, of COVID there's been a lot of studies out that, that show that they've had a detrimental effect uh, on the progression on top of everything else um, but thank you so much I hope um, you enjoyed maybe not group three but I hope in general people found um, the discussion groups useful and being able to propose their own um, topics um, so just to close, um, if you have any feedback that you would like to leave please do so um, just at the very bottom of the of the document. Um, the next call will take place the week of October 26th. I've linked a doodle poll there with a few days and times options. Um, and you can also register or sign up to um, uh, speak on a future call, give a fellows update. There's a link there as well. And then if you have upcoming events or activities that you want to promote or ones that you know of that the other fellows in the community might be interested in, um, please add them to the bottom of the document or um, submit them uh, via the newsletter form so that we can distribute those to the to the fellows community. Um, there are some upcoming events that I've sort of populated down at the bottom of the document. So if you're looking for um, more Zoom calls, um, feel free to check those out. Um, and if you want to um, add any requests for peer assist or support or share or update anything else, please feel free to do that. Um, but if anybody wants to unmute and say anything or share anything before we go. I, I noticed, hi everyone, I noticed a quick comment about it's no, nearly dinner time, can, you, can, can people tell. Uh, but is this, uh, this time, is this, uh, I mean, it's not the end of the day, maybe you finished your other work, but what do people think about this time? Not I sure. think she was referring to the cat. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> There's been many cats on this call <laughs> on different days. <laughs> all right, I retract the comment. It's like stealing the show. Oh, he's so cute. Um, yeah, so we do do the digital poll, and I know um, some people are in the US as well, so the later time um, also suits them. But in general, um, yeah, I go with the time that, that suits the most people. But if this is a problem, do, yeah, like Shrib said, let us know. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, if nobody has anything else to say, it was lovely to see you all. Have a rest, um, have a great rest of your evening, and hopefully see you next time. Thanks, bye. Great job. Bye. I'm waving from behind Max. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>